with a great head nod to start the show with energy. Chris McEwen, Bill Bush of Dry Range Heroes, bringing you episode 66 of That Range Life, a show sometimes about golf. We have some housekeeping I want to take care of right out of the gates. A little different than normal. Episode 66. Man, we missed our timing by one episode. Had it could have been episode 65, and as we're recording, announced today, my guy, Andrew Shaw of the Chicago Blackhawks. I know, man. Hung him up. Retired, 32, I think 32 years old. Concussions, I can relate yep. to it. What yep. what a story that guy had. What a career. Love him to death. So we're 65 plus one in our episodes. But hey, Andrew Shaw, little. Yeah. Tip of the cap. We'll do will. this one for Andrew anyways. Yeah. Um, let me tell you something, just a, just a moment of appreciation for my wife, who mm-hmm. I broke the news to. Um, okay. She was introduced to hockey through me during the Hawks run. Yep. We did we did the parades. We did the Soldier Field party, the whole thing. Um, she fell head over heels for the Hawks. We still watch, obviously. She's still super into it. Um, so I broke the news. She went to the Blackhawks Twitter feed, found the video. Did you watch the? Oh, yeah. Yeah. The video, uh, tears. She had tears. They did watching really, it. That's they how did, much they did a really good job with that video. And I'm like, did. I don't I, think it's as sad as they're making it, but they edited it perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> Got to pull those strings, man. The music was good. Like the yep. memories, the like all those things, like were perfect. Um, yeah. But I said, I said just real quick. Uh, he only played for the Hawks for seven years. He had a ten-year career, right? Right. Something like that. He played for the Hawks for seven years. It felt like he played for the Hawks for 15. Yeah, it did. But didn't it feel like he was there forever? But I think it's because they played, you know, uh, so many games that mattered so much. It just felt like, you know, their seasons went forever. He played played two extra seasons worth of postseason. Yeah. And um, right. The guy was just such a normal human, if you will. I, I, he, some, I saw somebody point this out. I'll, like he didn't, you know, he wasn't uncomfortable when he had to go meet with people and be in different situations. He acted like himself. He acted like you belonged with him just as much as anyone else did. He's yeah, just such a good, normal guy. And anything you read yeah. about him, everyone says, and he works so hard. Um, how about he played for two teams in his NHL career, Chicago Blackhawks, original six, man. Montreal Canadiens, original six, arguably, if not the two best, easily top five NHL markets in, to play in by mm-hmm. far. Maybe, mm-hmm. maybe Toronto. That's how you say it. Cause Canada, eh? <laughs> Toronto, uh, New York with the, the Rangers. Sure. I suppose Pittsburgh's not even like, I don't know who else. Maybe, maybe Colorado. I don't know. But it's Detroit? like, those are the four. Yeah. Detroit's not terrible environment. It's, a, it's hockey town. Yeah. They did, call, they did call it hockey town for a while. Now they play it <laughs> at the Joe, but now they play at little Caesars arena. I'm like, that's, <laughs> it's a weird. Anyway. I mean, I know why it's that, but right. So anyway, Andrew Shaw hats yes. off. Also, I wore my Scott. I'm just going to leave it at this. I wore my Scott Redmond Concepts hat today for my friend Emma of Scott Redmond Concepts. Thinking of her and her family. She's the best. Hats off to them. All right. Okay. One more favor to do for us, guys. If you haven't already, please go down below here. Subscribe to this YouTube channel. We're hitting you with vlogs. We're hitting you with course reviews, gear reviews. Uh, what's in the box episodes. <laughs> we had a show before this show talking about the show and the channel. And uh, we have Bill's got, Bill was taking notes, ladies and gentlemen, during the conversation because of the brainstorming we were doing and the ideas that we've got. The, the summer that I think, the summer of Chris and Bill is going to be a thing. I want to point out to you. You're going to want to subscribe to this thing. I want to point out to you in the audience, this channel has by and large been a COVID born channel for the last (laughs) year. Okay. true. We haven't even been able at length to get together and do all the types of things we want to do for you. So they're coming. The ideas are coming together. We, oh God, we have one coming. We have to pitch and we have to get by in, but I'm so excited for it. (laughs) That's what I'm talking about. We have ideas that we have to pitch 
so other people subscribe that you will channel. benefit from that that Ooh. subscribers are going to benefit from when we sit here and say all this shit about how hey <laughs> we do this for you these ideas we're doing for you okay so it's, true. it's so subscribe true. you want to find out when that video comes hit the bell get notified and just because we like look show us a little love like the video would love it if you could it that asking the cockles in my heart warm it does it really does so make sure you do that all right gear talk today we're gonna do it a little different we've done this before in some fashion but i'm gonna hit chris with a little bit of dealer's choice for the today's gear talk we'll see mm. what we talk about and then um Chris wasn't planning on talking about this topic, I don't think, but I saw on the internets and I have questions. So after gear talk, a little bit of a, a, a little baby viral post of mine that's still it's still getting some action. You know what other viral post I saw that I got a kick out of, and I was also a little disappointed to the point I didn't even bring it up in any text. <laughs> well, Adam Unfiltered's tag or tweet. What's the best steel shaft? on the market right now. And I'm like, Adam, <laughs> you know, it wasn't mine. Glad it wasn't mine. You know, there, there is no objective answer to that. And I'm like, I didn't even have it in me. And I'm going to hear about it after this video. I didn't even <laughs> have it in me to go, Adam, why are you asking this? You know better. Even if it's a bit, whatever. I'm like, I can't do it. I'll get too worked up. And then Chris will start busting my chops. I'm like, you're not even part of this. <laughs> Shut up. And then and Chris are going to have a side text where we, we're in a fight for some reason. And we don't even really know why. And then we start throwing woe mans around at each other. So I'm like, I'm not even going to do it. But Adam and the amount of people who, and then what killed me, Scoob replies, nip on modus. And tags me i'm like when did i ever say that was the best shaft in the market I'm not saying it's good like or the one i, I, I think like you wanted your the, you wanted your feedback maybe but i didn't want to get in trouble with anybody not i mean anybody like our friends not brands right. because i right. i was gonna go full-blown oh i'm a regular guy no like full-blown golf nerd on it i go i'm not doing it <laughs> not doing it anyway chris <sighs> let's do some gear talk All right, Chris, you have two choices for gear talk today. Okay. Do you want to talk about the Fujikora Vista Pro golf shaft or the Cobra King Rad Speed Fairway Wood? Well, whichever one we don't talk about, we will talk about it in a future episode. So this doesn't mean okay. you'll never hear from it's it. Not, it's not all or nothing. It's not all or nothing. I assume, I mean, I is based on when we need to find content, <laughs> you know, uh, I'm sure one will come back up, but what would you like to talk about today? I want to, we haven't talked in a while about a good shaft. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so let's go, let's go Vista Pro. Okay. For this episode of Gear Talk. Let's start. Everyone watching already knew we were going to talk about that. I thought Should about that. Should I not put that. it in the title? Should no, I I think it the title? we need we need those searches and clicks and what have you. Right. And so it's going to be there. But at, just understand as you're you watching, you saw how this, the how the sausage was made. Right, you saw that I got that's the, I got to choose the fun bit of it, and that's how this video got its title. <laughs> anyway, right. Let's get a, to know it's a video title origin story. Okay, <laughs> right. it's like Chris's latest podcast he's putting out, <laughs> produced by me. Um, <laughs> all it is is like me slipping in my jokes anyway Fujikora Vista Pro let's talk about what it is first before we get into the whole review piece of it so okay. around 2016 Fujikora launched the Vista it had a Vista Pro line and the line is supposed to be you know it's not the top of the line offering from them but it's a good offering from them. And, you know, some people are like, yeah, I want to upgrade my driver, my fairway wood, my hybrid uh, away from this piece of crap made for shaft that came out in the, you know, with that sure. stock OEM. Um, I would tell you that gap between the made for stuff that you're seeing and it's mass produced versus like the small boutique stuff has definitely narrowed in recent years. But back then, huge difference in quality. But mm -hmm. people didn't want to spend 
three to a thousand dollars, three hundred to a thousand dollars on an aftermarket shaft Jeez. to upgrade their new sure. driver. And especially like 2016 is the start of the like five hundred, six hundred dollar driver era. So you already spent six hundred yep. bucks on a driver. You don't want to spend maybe and maybe you got a fitting, too. So that costs money on top of it. Right. Right. People don't want right. to turn this driver into a twelve hundred dollar, thirteen hundred dollar investment. I get it. So, but they still want more. Like they still care about their game. They still want something better than what they have. Or like maybe even the stock offerings aren't great, and they just don't want to spend more money. Insert the Vista Pro line. Well, five years later, okay, it's 2016 to 2021. In case people don't know math, five years later, a lot has changed in shaft technology, materials, designs across the board, all brands, but. I don't know if anybody is aware of this, but Fujikura has this little shaft called the Ventus featuring <laughs> Velocore technology. It is arguably the most popular aftermarket go- golf shaft out there, I'd say, right now. Um, I'd love for someone to be like, no, here's that's not true dispute. I'm like, you get the point. People love <laughs> love the Ventus and its Velocore. Yes. Vista Pro does not have Velocore in it, but... There are a lot of concepts that Fujikora learned from the process of developing Velocore, the Ventus, and other shafts they've had in their family that they have taken and applied to the Vista Pro line. So now, really no matter what your swing is, you can be slow with poor angle of attack, bad launch, whatever. They have something for you. Mm. So... You could swing or you could swing, you know, the living daylights out of the club. They have something for you there, too. They have it for your driver or your woods. They have it for your hybrid and they even have it for your irons. You can go look at their website for pricing, but the pricing is more moderate. The woods drive like so we I we tested a driver shaft 125 bucks. Really? This Vista Pro is Vista Pro $125. Is that right? Wow. I will not tell you. You are going to confuse it for a Ventus with Velocore. Of course not. You're not. Of course not. But that's that's a much more reasonable for for an average, let's say, once a month player to invest into. Right. A shaft. So you went and bought. For sure. You went and bought a five hundred dollar tailor made driver, and you go, right. I'm just not hitting it very well. There's something in the shaft. Be like, but I don't want to spend. Hundred dollars to go get a fitting, and I don't want to spend four hundred dollars on a new shaft. But I also don't want to bail on. You know, like this was five six hundred bucks. I don't want to be out <laughs> that investment. Yeah. So minimize your damage. Hundred twenty five dollars to try something else out, and you can get fit for these. Like you could go into a club champion and be like, "Hey, I want I want to try the Vista Pro or something like that because it's more affordable. I can't afford to put a Ventus in the bag." Um, but I need to do something yeah. and, you know, I need to figure out a weight, that's a, a flex, whatever. That's a really good point. Just as, just to, to give people that, like when you go in, yes, it's great to go in with an open mind and, and all those kinds of things, but you can go in and say, put me in the best version of the Vista Pro that fits me and we'll call it a day. Like, don't even, you know what I mean? Like you can, everyone has their cost parameters, but you know what I mean? That's just something that. You need to remind people sometimes. I feel like, or you, some you know, variable you, similar to that. Like I think, whatever it is, yeah. I know a lot of people who've gone into Club Champion and been like, "Hey, I'm not looking to spend all this money on these big upgrades. I want to get fit for whatever the stock offerings are in these drivers. I just want the best stock sure. driver, and I trust you guys to fit me for it more than Golf Galaxy Superstore, whatever." Right? Right. So I think right. you could go in there and be like, "Hey, I'm willing to do a shaft upgrade." But I don't want to get the six hundred dollars shaft. I would like, you know, like right. I know the Vista Pro exists at one hundred and twenty five dollars. Um, or there's yep. people it's like they don't want to do any of that, but they like like a lot. I get comments on driverangeheroes dot com. I don't know if you know I ran that website um, <laughs> all the time where people are just blindly trying stuff. Which I'm a golf nerd. I like to do that too. One hundred twenty five dollars is easier to blindly try than six hundred bucks. Yep. So anyway, that's the value of it. There's something for every swing. And I I should, I wish I knew it better, but it's almost like there's too much to know to have it all memorized. But full gamut of like amateurs, seniors, swing speed, up through X-Flex exists. 
weights, flexes, you name awesome. it, right? So when I when I got a, I got approached by Fujikora, um, my guy over there who we talk more barbecue than we do uh, golf. <laughs> he, um, yeah. you know, one of the things he looks for us to do, and I think between this show and the website, right? This isn't for the four percent of people who are into golf. This isn't for uh, all just scratch players, right? It's very much in every man's voice, and I think the Vista Pro yeah. is geared towards the every every. I shouldn't say every man. I'm better than that. Every person. That's right. Um, every golfer. Every golfer. Not looking to spend a bunch of money, and you know they're not trying to be the big golf nerds that we are, but they want something. They'd like a little guidance and education to make their game better. So he's like, let's go after something like that. And I said, he goes, what do you have in mind? I said, Eric, we review shafts on this website all the time. I swing the, I swing the club 115 miles an hour plus. That's not relatable. <laughs> this shaft is for people who need something relatable, something that they can understand and apply to them. Yes, there are people, quote, like me that could play a Vista Pro, but more people are like, hey, I am the average golfer. Speak to me. And I said, I got mm -hmm. the guy. My buddy Mark, he is a senior player, good player. I would tell you, he, this, this guy, tries to sell me that he's a double digit handicap every time we play. <laughs> And I'm like, I you you play enough with me. I will throw up plenty of terrible numbers, but I'll throw just enough numbers to keep right. my handicap in a single <laughs> right. digit that I can't play to 90% of the time, right? Right. And right. Uh, so what does he usually do? I think I've taken taken the money off of him once, and it was literally like $2. Um, <laughs> so I said, Mark, what do you think of this? Are you open to like, hey, because I know he has a stock shaft, but I know he takes his golf real serious and he's pretty good. Well, Mark, would you like to try this Fujikura shaft? Here is the concept and be the be the tester for this and look for this feedback. And he said, yeah, let's do it. So I got the shaft. I got him a he plays. I'll just say a no name. Popular lightweight driver shaft. Something in the okay. 40 gram range, regular flex. Given the Vista Pro line, extensive, I said, I need a 40 gram range, regular flex driver shaft. Had it sent to me, built it up for Mark, came out to my house, picked it up, went and reviewed it. Now, here's what was interesting. And here's my takeaway with this thing. Being Mark is older with a slower swing speed. He tends to need to hit the ball higher in the air for more carry and needs mm -hmm. spin to hold it in the air. Whereas a guy like me is like, I need just enough spin to hold it in the air, but I want, I don't want too much. So one, I can control it Two, I'm going to get that rollout. Mark right. is just looking for as much carry as possible. And then, Hey, if he gets a little roll, great. Right. So his gamer, he's launching like, I forgot. I think I said in the review, but like 16, 17 degrees with, you know, like 2,700 okay. and spin. Okay. All so right. he had, de you know, he had decent and he had pretty good total carry, but with the Vista pro, he's like, you know, I could control it better. You know, so his dispersion was better. I was more accurate mm -hmm. with it, but he hit it lower somewhere in the like, Roughly third. I, I could go look at the numbers, obviously, which would be probably helpful when you're watching this video. You know what? I'll do it. I'm better than this. I'm better than this performance. Yeah. So he was hitting the ball, swinging the club, 93 miles an hour, 140 mile an hour ball speed, with a 14.6 degree launch angle. So it was a bit lower, and he brought his spin. Yeah. He brought his spin down. It was somewhere like roughly 200 RPM. So not a ton. He got less carry. He got more roll. Um, so I could see some of being right. And so it's a weird thing. I expected to see a little more like apples to apples where this thing is made to get rid of these stock OEM shafts and give you better performance. And it wasn't necessarily a better or worse thing. It was very much a different thing. And what I found yeah. after looking at his data and talking to him about it, he's more accurate and it played better 
more like a driver shaft for him. Oh yeah. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. That's exactly kind of what I, where I was thinking with that, what I was going with that. It wasn't the big floating shot, which again, yep. with the rate at which, you know, we're, we're talking like maybe up to 15, uh, 15 yards less carry, which isn't an insignificant number. Also to be fair, I think if you gave him time to adjust to the shaft, it probably be pretty comparable there, but yeah, he was able to keep the ball. I don't want to say and play more, but more under control, hit his lines better and get a piercing flight. So I've seen it when he gets that with that spin and that amount of launch on a windy day, Right. He's not going anywhere. And I've right. seen also like he doesn't have a swing. That thing's spinning off the planet. You know, it's he, he runs into that where I think with the Vista Pro now, he was able to gain a little more control. And it had and he said it has better feel like he goes I, at, at the end of the day the it felt I felt like I had more control over. It. I could feel the ball better. Mm hmm. There's something to be said about that. He's like, am I telling yeah. you I need to switch today? To Put it this way. He didn't give it back to me. Right. You know, not that I want it back. I don't need a 40 gram yeah. regular shit, but like he's keeping it around and caught his interest. So I think the big takeaway from it was, you know, in theory, if he had to pay for it, it wasn't an, it was a fairly affordable option to get better feel, more control and a more driver like performance than he's used to. And I bet you, mm -hmm. He wasn't, he wasn't there with me to guide him when he did the majority of his testing. But I bet you if someone just said, hey, stop trying to do your very technical, uh, learned golf swing, just rip it. Yeah. This shaft would probably let him do that more. In fact, I'm supposed to play with yeah. him soon. I'm just like, hey, do me a favor. You play here all the time. Put your stock shaft away. Put that one back in. Let's see what happens. Yeah. Because I'm curious. So. My limited experience, I, I wish I could talk more about the um, the iron shafts and the hybrid shaft because I bet you like that's a place you could see them really, really, really shine because they're also, I feel like, in graphite terms, affordable, good uh, graphite options. There aren't a yeah. ton of them. And then you know, yep. just hybrid shafts in general, I feel like, are a fairly neglected area of the market. So I could see these being pretty nice, like, hey, this – piece of junk that i got stock is no good right and right. to be clear fujikura makes some of these shafts that we're, we're talking about so it's not saying like i'm not saying they're all the worst it's just like enough of them i've played in the past have been the worst so yeah um i mean at, at that pr at that price point uh you, like you said even experimenting with it is you know, is right you know, it, it's not the worst idea in the world so it's, yeah i think if you're asking me in the little bit of time I did, I have spent with the Vista pro line. They aren't, they aren't Ventus Velo cores hundred percent, but they are very good. Like next step up in aftermarket golf shafts. They have more of that premium feel and performance you expect. Mm -hmm. They're not bad. So you, like you, like you said, even if you, you know, you want to get a little more into your gear. You want to invest in it. You want to upgrade it. It's a great option. It's definitely something worth checking out. And just $125 for a new driver shaft. That's actually pretty good. That's pretty. I mean, that is. I'm, yeah. Yeah. Pretty amazing. The last time I remember anyone doing anything near that, and they still, I think, I can't remember, but were more expensive, was like before you even golfed. The original green Aldilla NV shafts. They were like that olive army green, and everybody had one, and they weren't too expensive, but they're pretty good. Um, yeah, it was sort. It was along these lines, like, hey, for that kind of money, it shouldn't be as good as it is, and I could put this in my bag and save quite a bit of money and get good performance out of it. Yeah. So that's it, man. That's hey, the Vista good on, Pro. Good on, uh, good on Fujikura for uh, for coming to the people. Yeah, you know what? Hey, not everybody is the top four percent of golf. We gotta think of everybody in this game. Just, like our yeah, buddies at more, Tour Edge, more of us than them. That's right. <laughs> right. You know, come on, guys. It's a new era. What again? That goes. To how many times have we talked about on our shows about like, hey, 
COVID, more people are golfing. Same time, you know, people have been, you know, uh, losing jobs, whatever. This game yeah. needs to come back and the be more affordable and accessible. There you go. We're, we're talking boutique golf at a more accessible point now. Man, I got deep. I got real deep. All right. <laughs> Fujikora Vista Pro. Check out the review. DriveRangeHeroes.com. I'm going to try to get it back from my buddy Mark. No, I'm not. I'll let Mark Wick keep it. I'm just kidding. All right. <laughs> That's Gear Talk. All right, Chris. There. Look, yeah. I made it two of three portions of the show That's without right. dropping in all right. I almost made it. And I haven't been practicing. It just was that good for once. Anyway, so I saw your tweet that yes. talked about, um, I may have the order <laughs> wrong here. You shot a 50 on the front, 40 on the back, I believe. That's the right order. This past weekend. That's the right order. And I, of course, I read it. Yeah. I go, well, that's quite relatable. And I, I think I've probably <laughs> seen you do it before. I'm like, why are you so upset about it? And um, I don't, yeah. to be fair, I don't know if you were upset about it, but um no, I thought I, it was really, it was just the, I just like the, the GIF. That's fair. This guy. Yeah. You love a good Jim Halpert GIF. You do. I do. Now, I do. which is funny. Speaking of my guy, Fuji Kirk, cause he sent me the same GIF this week. He too. did. That's right. Look at this. What a world I live <laughs> right. in. Um, here's my first question. Where'd you play? Schaumburg Golf Club. Oh, a former That's, Langford Moreau design here in the western true. suburbs of Chicago. Yeah, just out, just just probably what fifteen minutes from the airport. It's a great airport golf course for people traveling in. I'm sure they're staying in that area, or whatever. I don't know if it does now, but I feel like every time I used to see in WRX, people like, yeah, coming in from to, into Chicago, where should I play? And people are like, you should call and try to get on Rich Harvest Farms. I'm like, one. You're not going to get on Rich Harvest Farms by just making a call. Two, right? It's nowhere it's near the airport. Away. Yeah, right. like you're better right. off flying into like either Davenport or Rockford at that point. No, or maybe that like the Calb. Um, the Calb has that like little military runway. I won't even call it an airport. Right. Like maybe you can fly in there. Um, right. But That's that really one funny. would come up every now and then pre-renovations. And for those that don't mm. know, they have 27 holes. It's been there roughly 100 years. And they were originally mm -hmm. all three uh, Langford Moreau courses that got typical, you know, like Dick Nugent and Bob Lomond to death. I, you know, I think so. But yeah. that's a general yeah. use of term. And they've said someone dug out the original designs and plans and said, you know what? looking at old aerials like we're bringing it back so great course i'm sure it's booked like crazy these days yeah but yes if you're coming into town it is here here real quick you're coming into town public course close enough to o'hare midway let's say o'hare close enough to o'hare schomburg golf yeah. club mount prospect yes mount prospect to me is yes know what you're getting into and all but like great golden era it is a, influenced it's a blast yeah modern course it's a blast of a golf course really right. fun um yep and if you're looking for names and notoriety do dubs dread just do it i you know how i feel about it yeah but if you're like they were I'm, just uh the the top 100 golf.com golf course public golf courses just came out dubs dread is still hanging on and somehow i think they're in they're in the 90s but they're still there and somehow true spec the fitting company is the number one course in america too I just, I just golf guy pretty bad there. Sorry. <laughs> anyway, those are, I'm going to give you those yes. three. Those are three good ones. I those admittedly, ones. I don't, I am not putting Cog Hill <laughs> that high on the list, but if you're in town and you're like, I want to play a name and add it to my career list, you can't, right. you should get a ball, get a logo ball, the whole thing. Right. Yeah, sure. Do it. All right, back to Anyways. the point. You played Schaumburg. You had a 50 and a 40. And to be fair, they are like three very yeah. different 27s. So I could – or different nine, sorry. So I could see yeah, that happening. Yeah, yeah. Tell me a little more. Who would you play with? I, I played with the J-Riv. The Riv, okay. The Riv. Yep. Uh, I, I played with him. And uh, so a couple of things about – so, yes, the course was packed. We played later in the afternoon – because the I idea know this because he was supposed. I said, "You want to swing by and have this beer we were going to have, and you know that kid's going to be born soon." He's like, "Oh, he's golfing. I'm golfing. I can't." And yeah, then yeah. I saw your tweet. I went, 
I think I know what happened here. Okay. Right. <laughs> right. And um, when we booked the round, uh, Sunday was supposed to be the nicer day of the two days. Mm-hmm. That didn't end up happening. Um, but we were going to play later in the afternoon because it was going to be the warmest then. You know, it was going to be like, it was going to be in the mid 50s probably on Sunday. Yeah. Um, which is going to be the nicer today. So that was, but, but that did not occur necessarily. But, anyways, um, course was packed. There's a couple of things about Schaumburg um, where I, maybe they're still trying to figure it out. I don't know. It's, a, it's in wonderful shape. They do a great job there. The renovation's fantastic. The Prairie Style Clubhouse is great. Um, all those kinds of things, right? I don't know that they should have people walking. You know, some courses have that rule, like walkers only in the morning, like from, you know, first tee to 11 or something. It was a five and a half hour round. Oh my God. And we walked it. And it's not a super walkable course to begin with. I mean, for J Riv, it's fine, right? The deck, he runs 50 miles a week or whatever. I, did um, you know? I couldn't tell from his stories every day at right. lunchtime. Got it. Okay. He runs a lot. Yeah. Um, so I'm sure he was fine. Uh, but yeah, we were there for a long time. And not only that, but like, so moment of silence for pandemic traffic. It is no more. It took me a good 50 to 55 minutes to get there from the city, which whatever, it's fine. I wasn't expecting them. I'm not used to that, right. but it was a long day. Let's just put it that way. Yep. Um, we were going to do some filming before because that's why I left super early. I ended up getting there 20 minutes before the tea time. It was a whole thing. Um, so maybe that contributed to the historically bad front nine for me. But uh, anyways, very slow. We had a very, very sort of just, um, not only were they slow, the four that were walking ahead of us, but they were borderline inconsiderate. Mm. You know what I mean? Like they saw us standing at the tee box for a length of time. Um, and so that was working against us in terms of pace of play. The other thing that was working against us, um, you were, there was three out of the four of us, certainly one out of the four of us, the guy, one of the guys that we got paired up with, probably just out of college, played high school at, at played high school golf at Schoenberg Golf Club. Um, he needed to wait legitimately. We joke about this, right? Like the golf world jokes, but he legitimately needed to wait for these guys to get out of the way almost on every hole from the tee box and certainly on every hole from the par fives. Like he was, he was a good hitter, long hitter, had to wait, you know, because he could legitimately reach a, a par five and two on every par five that we played. Right. So that also contributed to a little bit. Um, anyways, let's get to the round, right? So by the way, uh, that what you're describing, and it's funny because I, I talk about it all the time about, oh, kids, man, I miss being able to play golf in the afternoon or those twilight rounds are cheap. Yeah, you can man. play in like two and a half hour rounds. Yeah. I go, wait a minute. Pre-kids, like those years have been gone for a long time. This is why <laughs> I I hate unless it's unless it's private by an invite I get. I yeah. hate afternoon golf for this yeah, very I probably won't, reason. Yeah. It's totally true and I, I reminded myself this is why I play first thing in the morning. Every, Traffic isn't an issue. Yep. And we're first out or we're second or third out and you kind of cruise through. Everybody's over the afternoon. Like everybody's over their hangovers. They've handled their obligations. Like they're, they're at the golf course for the day and night. That's it. And it's just like, they're on their time. It's yeah, Yeah. it's the worst. And when you start like, have you know, as our summers go, we have the nine 30 sunsets and you're like, right. I had six hours to finish this round and I'm not going to, I was legitimately concerned that we weren't going to make it before the sun went down. I mean, that's one point. I, and notice, I just want to be very perfectly clear. And notice, I nowhere did I say how good these golfers were or how it's it's irrelevant, right? Right. Like you, I don't. If you're new to the game and you don't understand, and that's why I said they're borderline to consider it because if you don't understand pace to play, pace to play, because you're new. I get it. Fine. Like no one's taught but, you. Here's that. Again. Right. Yeah. It right. happens. I, I it, it totally. And I understand it, but you see like, mm, guys, like, come on. Like you just kind of, to me anyways, it's inherent. Like there are guys waiting for us here. They have played from the fairway, th- you know, two out of the four guys, almost every time have played on the fairway. Um, you know, like, come on. Anyways. Do you think it was like, a marshalling thing though? Cause I've noticed that a lot of these choruses who are like, 
you know, get up your ass on the first hole and you're like, oh my God, we're not even a hole into this. There's no pace issues. And then you never see him again the rest of the and Yeah, like, we never saw golf yeah, Twitter loves to joke about it, but you're you're sort of like you have more golfers than ever. Your court like I mean, I bet you guys didn't pay a hundred bucks for your round of golf, but like the place no. isn't like super cheap either. It's like, hey, can you guys just cruise around and make sure your full T sheet is moving? Or is it like yeah. just at this yeah. point they don't care if people come back to the course or not because if you don't take the tea <laughs> slot, the tea spot, someone, someone else will. will. I don't know, but that's yeah. okay. And it's 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 a lot of I know that 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 course it it, it is a golf club, so I think there are sort of membershipy type. This of is my players. This is my golf course. Thank you. Right. Yeah. Right. So, anyways, so let's talk about the front nine. Right. Mm-hmm. We'll talk about the fifty. Um, a couple of bad breaks. So. Uh, there's a, there's a par five in the front that I was three feet. I, so I smoked a drive and we can talk about the, here's what's happening to part of, well, we'll get to the, what's happening. No, we'll talk about it right now. Here's what's happening right now. And you know, this, um, we got a bunch of different weird new stuff in our bags, mm-hmm. you and I, right. And you're, you're, you're still feeling that stuff out. So I've got the C721 driver, C721 fairway, C721 hybrid. I've got, um, the ZX4 irons in there too. So, and I got a new putter, uh, right? The Cleveland putter, frontline putter in there. So I got a bunch of new stuff and there's some feeling out of things still um, that goes along with having all this new stuff in the bag. Uh, and so it's it's part testing, part like I wouldn't hit a driver here, but I'm going to do it anyways, right. right? There's some of that that's happening. Um, on this p- particular par five, I hit the C721 driver so good. Like just destroyed the golf ball right the ball went forever um Must be had that, the wind at a, it had to be the had, nine and a half degrees aloft i'm sure yeah for had, sure. had the wind behind us on this hole thankfully because we were playing into the wind it felt like every hole going into here um just hammer to drive right puts me in position center of the fairway to legitimately go for this green and two um with the hybrid so i've got the 721 hybrid in my hands by far this early in the season, my most confident club. We talked about it last week. That thing <sighs> continues to just be an incredible, incredible golf club. I smoke the hybrid. Mm-hmm. Okay. I got it's probably 220 out, 225. Smoke the thing. And uh, except I hit it at the farthest point of where the water and the green meat. Mm. So I came about three feet short of landing the green and instead it went off that, you know, the, the divider and into the water. Yep. So now you're, now you're hitting four from the wrong side of the water (laughs) from, yeah, from where it went over the water. And, uh, and we all thought the foursome thought like, I got it. I got it. I went right at the pin, super aggressive, feeling good about this club. I can do this just, just, just show, I'm, I will have nightmares forever about this. So anyways, that was those sort of breaks. And the other piece of it was like, I just didn't have my putter right. I think I three putted the first hole around. I three Sounds like you need a hole. KBS one step tour in that thing. Maybe, but just wait, there's, there's more here. Um, and that's another thing I'm still feeling out the putter. So I'm trying to be aggressive with putts and, and just kind of get after it a little bit, see what it can do, see how it feels the whole thing. Never, I, everyone knows I shot a 50 on the front. Okay, wasn't great. Made some bad decisions here and there. Right, hit some balls. I, you know, the thing is, I think I've, to, I think I told you about it. I Man, I was talking to Riv like at our Harborside round. I didn't feel like I necessarily hit a bad ball. Like I actually left, even though my score wasn't great. I left like that was okay. That was pretty good. I, I did some decent ball striking that day. Mm-hmm. Um, same kind of thing. Just like whatever. I, I mean, I was, I didn't lose any golf balls other than the one that went in the water. It's just like wasn't happening right the other thing that was happening on the i mentioned the wind on the front it was, was windy as shit yesterday it was super windy and, and even today, though wow. yeah real windy today i almost lost one of my plants out there <laughs> anyways uh we were all of us were struggling with the wind we couldn't figure it out it was all over the place if it felt like a one club wind standing at a tee box it was probably almost a three club wind heading into that wind in real life when the ball got over, you know, our heads basically. So we were struggling with that. So on the back nine, 
We'll move along to the back nine. Uh, a couple things happened. One, we were, I was fully accounting for the win. Now I was clubbing up, even though it didn't make any sense sometimes like on a 130 yard par three, I was hitting, you know, like an eight iron, like way going just like, if I clear the green, I clear the green. Who cares? Right. right? I'm going to throw it up in the air. Um, Cause we were all, everybody was going, coming up short on, on these approach shots. So that happened. The second thing that happened, William, is I pulled out the C721 three wood mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and just started hitting lasers off the tee. Like just like it was born to be in my hands between the, between that hybrid and the fairway wood, just so easy for me to hit those things. So natural. Um, so I started hitting that thing like crazy just, and just firing, just going fairway, fairway, fairway. And then the last thing that happened was my putter got red hot, just red hot. Sorry, I had, a, I had an upstairs noise that distracted. <laughs> Sorry. Couldn't just, I just wasn't missing a putt. I, there was like, it was just, I was just making a bunch of putts. Uh, and so, yeah, I just turned my right, my round around, uh, that quickly. And that was really the gist of it. And the good news is like, I think the 721 stuff we talked about, like sneak peeks at what's in the bag, the 721 stuff is staying. Mm. Those are really, really, really good clubs. Really, really good clubs, man. God. They're so good. I was going to sneak peek some more about it, but we'll save it. We'll save it for our 721 yeah. later on yeah. discussions. Um, that's good. Fair enough. Hey, either way. Yeah. So that was the 50, 40. And, and it's funny because like it, it generated a bunch of discussion and people like some people were like, dude, I'd be thrilled if I shot a 50, 40 and other people would be like, well, yeah, you're, but you improved during the round and whatever. I'm like, yeah. So if you, this is the funny thing about golf. And I says, I said this on Twitter. If I shot a 45, 45, who gives a shit? It's a 90. Nobody cares. Like is the extremes that got you. It's like, yeah, who, it's like whatever. It's a 90. But if you shoot a 50 and a 40, you have like, it's a story. It's like a thing. Like, oh my God, you know, like, but it was a, it's a double digit sw- like swing in, right. in your round. And it's, and you, you, you are equally frustrated and uh, optimistic about life you know what, on a golf course. You know what kills me about a 42, 40 T O O? Yeah. Right. It's, so it's like the worst number because if you think about it, it's only four over. It's not bad, but like yeah. you can shoot a 40, 44 and you're like, Oh, okay. And it's like, man, it's still just mid eighties. And then it's like, yeah. Or it's like you shot a 38, 40 and you're like, my forties. I'm like, God, if only I could have cracked that for like 40 is <laughs> such like a, <laughs> what? Like almost like, it's almost like tying. I don't know how to explain it. Like, you're right. It's just that's, a, that's an interesting uh, <clears throat> perspective from someone who's broken eighty in their golf career, and it, that's what it took. I think it, to it, realize it's it, weird because well, and even if you haven't, it's like I can't. Would it like if you put two forties up? You're like, all I had to do was crack one of them. Just one. Well, of that's them. that's the worst. I think that's the worst golf score for people like us. It's a hundred. Is pro- it, it might as well be a hundred. Might as well be 100. Yeah. <laughs> if I'm not going to break 80, just forget it. But landing on 80 is like, oh, cause that's it's a haunting just number. One, haunting yeah, for sure. number. Even if, like, when I was in for my sure. prime, I'm like, I'd get mad. Basically, I'd get mad at anything over 80, which probably wasn't even reasonable, but there was a time in my life. And I'm like, man, thank God I shot a 39 on the front and got a 40 on the back. <laughs> like I still shot a 79, whatever I'm in the seventies, yeah. but it's like, I go play somewhere that's pretty tough and go 40, 40. I don't say like all I needed was one stroke, pretty good round. You're like, man, I, I was terrible today. And meanwhile, it's like, and we're going back to these days. I was, let's just say I might've been leaving that round playing my buddies, like with a considerable amount of cash in my pocket and being right. like, Right. Oh, I shot a forty and a forty, and it's just like, right. Take it See, easy. I'm lucky. I've only sh- I've I've shot a handful of eighty ones, but I I just think rem- I'm reminded when I shoot a forty, like you know I, I'm talking about it now or whatever. It's a whole thing. I'm just reminded like it's really hard 
at least for me to break 80. You got to shoot like let's simplify the it. idea of golf. The idea of play is so hard. Golf is it's so hard. hard like I try to think back, like on that back nine where I was, I, I, to me, I played really well. Uh, you know, there were, I didn't three putt anything. I made all the putts I was supposed to, you know, basically anything inside five feet was easy, automatic, six feet, probably easy and automatic. Um, I'm trying to, I was trying to think of a, like a stroke, like where was the stroke to break 40? Yeah. Right. Like, I don't know. I don't know if I had one. Yeah. You know, it's like, right. that's kind of my game. Like I was four over or whatever it was on the round. Like, good Lord, man. Like it's just where. such a weird, even if it's like, even if you go 41, 41, you know, you're like, okay, yeah. I was in the forties. It's like, yeah, yeah totally. It's yeah. really, you know, the whole, like, two strokes one way you weren't even close two strokes the other way you were there so it's like it's yeah. 41 isn't that different yet feels like <laughs> right. well i guarantee if you shot a 41 you probably would have had five strokes you could have found a big like, where were those two strokes like well oh, here right. here here right you exactly. shoot a 40 like i don't really know i played pretty well and that's been the thing for me it's like nowadays right. i have no business shooting a 40 on nine holes and i'm like <laughs> i'm like might as well be a 63 i don't care <laughs> when i really should be like right. hey, i played pretty well today not bad right right but yeah that was that was my round it was a good time and uh other than the slow play which you know i it's part of it's the golf course's fault for sure i just don't if those four guys were in carts i have no way to prove this and we were in carts maybe it would have been a little quicker but I, you yeah. know how i am i, I, I would have been so mad about that like there'd be no 40 happening on the back nine i'd be like i, I mean right. in, in true me fashion i'd be fun and i think it'd be enjoyable to be with but like i for sure would have been i'm over it. i'm shooting 112 on the back nine no problem right. <laughs> it's all, right. It's- all right well i'm glad you did have fun i was dying to hear that story and i purposely did not text you about it anything to do with it's it true so yeah. we could talk here um who do we have on golf origin stories this week? Oh, we've got um, Dave McPherson of uh, Putt View. Uh, I think the, I think the website. He told me the website like PuttViewBooks.com. Mm, mm, okay. Um, so he has um, he's he started a company during the pandemic to to do the yardage book thing. Mm-hmm. So he's there. There he's you know Putt View. A lot of people will know PuttView.com, which is. They're the people that do the greens with the lines, yeah, like the lines that are superimposed and things. So he's sort of using their technology um, from a topography mapping perspective and putting it on paper. And so now you can go and it's basically like on-demand yardage books for whatever golf course you want. And and along with the yardage books, you can also do the you know the green topography and heat map and all that kind of stuff. And it's got the the degrees of slope and uh, so we talk about that a bunch. Um, we had a really fun conversation. He's a Miller Lite guy, mm. just to let you know what kind of human he is. He's a good person. Um, Great tasting, less filling. That's right. That's right. So we uh, we just had a, it was a good time. And he was he's one of those guys where he's like uh, after we talked for I don't know an hour, and uh, he's like you know uh, I didn't think this thing would go longer than twenty minutes because I don't I didn't know I had that much to talk about. <laughs> But and you're like <laughs> an hour. Let me tell you about a YouTube show I do every week where we think it's gonna be a half hour. <laughs> right. Yeah. But he was he's a he's an entrepreneurial guy. He's got a couple different things going on at the same time. So we talk about all those things. All right. It's really fun. Check that out over at all your favorite podcast distributors. It's true. I listen to podcasts on Apple personally. I know. So it is about 85% of the world. And I think you listen, you know, on, maybe you listen on Spotify. I do listen on Spotify. That's true because, uh, for whatever reason, I've got the, well, it doesn't matter. I, I listen to, I do listen to podcasts. That's it Spotify. doesn't matter. All you had to do is just go, I do. <laughs> I need it. You know, come on. You know me well enough now where I got to give the full breakdown of my setup over right, here. For and sure. the reasoning behind everything I do all the time. Most importantly, you can listen to it on any podcast distribution platform that we you know like. of at least that's right hey over there if you do listen on on apple by the way if you do listen on apple leave a brother a, a review and a rating after you subscribe and like this video don't forget to do that don't right. forget to do that here on chris's youtube channel that's, go that's over right. and do that on in itunes okay or apple podcast now my mistake um right. 
DriveRangeHeroes.com. This week we have the Fujikura Vista Pro review. If you didn't want to watch that video or it didn't make sense to you, hear what we had to say okay. about it, Mark's experience. I'm sure if you have questions about it, leave a comment on the site here, whatever. We'll get you an answer. Maybe we'll talk about it again sometime. Um, yeah. We teased it when we did uh, Chris's choice for gear talk today. The Cobra right. Rad Speed Fairway Wood. Let's just say that club is uh, very popular amongst my friends right now. We didn't have it. If you wanted to see it in hand today, I don't have it. It's making friend rounds, so that's good. Yeah. Um, good review on that. Worth checking out. Lots to learn about that. Go take a look. And also this week, Chris, we had a vintage. This is the one I. This is the one I want to know about. We had a vintage post last week about some Ben Hogan irons. This week, Driver Range Heroes own a vintage golf extraordinaire expert, Justin Thompson's back with a oh, post that's great. about needing a bigger garage to accommodate his golf addiction, which is awesome. bad because I felt myself going down the route he's in. And thankfully, because uh, of Justin, he's honed in my collection goals. So I don't have his garage, but he's. We're going to need a bigger garage. It's a, Jaws, it's a Jaws reference for those who don't get it. Um, go check that out. It's good. Also, I want to remind you, I want you to take a look at Christopher McEwen's hat right now. That Range Life hat. You want one? Do you want to buy one? The autofocus actually doing some help there. Take a look at that. Scoo. Did it work? <laughs> Shut up, Scoo. Anyway, go to Second City Golf. Spelled out. Not... 2ND golf, second city golf. Right. Um, you can buy that range life hat he's wearing. You can buy some Jack Range Heroes hats. You, I think, it's a good one, man. I think you can buy this hoodie. I'm not sure. This one's more than the lot. inside of this. Look at the inside of that hat. It's a champion. It's good quality hat, man. It's a good. I love it. I ordered hat. another champion hat. Um, it's on the way. I, I placed an order this week. I'm you did. Always spent a lot of money. I, it's not that bad. <laughs> It's not that bad. It's all stuff I need. And God, I just Father's Day is coming up too. I'm gonna have to order more stuff. I love seeing the stuff. I love seeing the orders come in. Speaking of which, I know Scoob is, was busting my balls about the stickers. You will have stickers. They're gone. They're I. They have been sent. You know what? I wish you didn't send them yet. I don't appreciate the Scoob. Okay. <laughs> You could, I was going to say, you can wait now. Scoob is like the kid from um, Better Off Dead, you know, the Where's My $2 newspaper boy. God, there's <laughs> chasing a, us around. There's a reference. Man, I'm going to have to watch that one. <laughs> oh, that's so good. Where's my $2? That's yeah. one of the best. Anyway, go to the store. There's actually some new stuff up there. Check it out. There Chris's is. stuff. Best shirts on the planet. I ordered uh, the That Range Life shirt. Pretty excited about that coming. I know. I saw that. So I have that. My wife, Very my wife asked my wife for a pair of Driver Range Heroes joggers. <laughs> like I'm proud of you. So I ordered her some joggers. Anyway, check that's it out. That's a good wife, man. Good for her. Love her. She's the best. Um, yeah. I think that's it. Episode 66. That Range Life of Show is sometimes about golf. Chris, anything, any last words from you? Thanks for watching, everybody. Don't forget to subscribe. Perfect. Like the video. All right, he's Chris McEwen. This is his YouTube page. Subscribe to it like you just said. Go check him out. Golf Origin Stories, Golf Podcast. I'm Bill Bush, DriveRangeHeroes.com. You can follow me at Range Heroes on all the social medias. We'll talk to you next week.